Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Views for Build. It's uh, early morning right now of, of six days left. So we got six days left to uh, build this car. And uh, yesterday we pulled the engine and transmission out. In today's episode, we're gonna be painting the kind of engine bay frame compartment. You guys remember this car was completely burnt in half. So we welded on a new rear frame onto this car. Uh, so there's a lot of you know rough edges and stuff like that that needs to be painted up so it looks appropriate for SEMA. And hopefully we'll do some fun carbon fiber stuff as well. Stay tuned. Getting started, I want to get this thing into the paint booth for any of the prep work that we're going to do. So we need to get the axles off. So that means lifting up the car, taking the wheels off, uh, undoing the axle bolt. That'll get us uh, both the axles off. Other than that, it looks like the oil catch can is the only other. Oh, the oil catch can and the uh, uh, this is the water reservoir for the turbo coolers. Those both need to come off as well. So small stuff. Uh, we'll go ahead and get that off and then uh, put, we're going to take the good wheels, put these inside so they're safe, and then uh, we'll be able to start rolling this thing into the paint booth. car into the paint booth. Chelsea's helping me. Anybody that doesn't remember Chelsea is, oh, maybe you're new to the channel. Chelsea's my girlfriend. Um, she's going to be helping with paint. She helped last year paint the Datsun. So uh, next steps are anything with paint, we got to scuff the paint. Anything that's bare metal needs a coat of um, primer. But before we do that, it's all got to be cleaned up. So this is going to be kind of clean scuff primer. Okay, everything got cleaned up with wax and grease remover. We scuffed everything, took down any of the like spatter from Lamborghini or from us, we had some spatter over there. Next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is come through and hit all of the raw aluminum uh, pieces with some primer. All right, primer's on the car and it's looking great. Uh, and I got some stuff masked off and I'm ready to go. So you'll notice like not everything is masked off. We even still have the, the like donor wheels and tires on here and stuff like that. Um, that's because I'm using my turbine sprayer system and it has very, very little overspray. Uh, it's uh, it's called a maximizer and it, what it does is it's in another room over there uh, and it, it compresses the air from that room and it uses turbines. So it's not, uh, it doesn't create moisture in your lines and, it, and you get good temperature air with no moisture and it's all very, very clean, which is really great. It's a lot better than a traditional, um, you know, air compressor system. So if anybody's interested, I'm gonna put a link in the description. Um, they hooked this up and I love that machine. So I'm gonna be using that. It creates very, very little overspray and I'll be able to just, you know, kind of directionally come in here and hit everything that I want without kind of just blasting the whole room with paint. Um, for this, you know, this is, this car's going to SEMA, so I want everything to look right and I want everything to be the same color, but this is something that I personally don't care about that much. Um, this is not a show car it's meant to be more of a racing car um, so it's just a quick and dirty paint up so we're gonna be using just a uh, pretty economical good coverage single stage paint it's a black with a little bit of metallic and what a single stage means is it's you just you know you, everything has to be primered and then you spray over that and it has the glossiness kind of built into it so you spray it on and it, and it, and it dries glossy rather than doing a base coat and then you put your clear coat on top of that this is a little bit faster a little bit cheaper and a little bit easier um, and that's you know what we want to do when you have a situation where you don't care but you want it to all look the right color so that's what's going on i'm going to clean the floors a little bit uh, push or close this door right here install our fan system for ventilation and heat this room up and then we're going to start spraying
guys and girls, the frame is painted. Um, all that talk about overspray, uh, I kind of forgot that when you're spraying at small bars, you don't hit as much of your stuff. So I filled the whole room with overspray like I didn't want to. Hopefully I didn't damage too much, uh, too badly. Kind of got overspray on every single thing. Um, it's not the first time I've done that and it's probably not the last. Uh, moving on. The frame paint looks really, really good. I'm very, very happy with the results for just a quick little spray up. It is uh, very black. I hear this paint is really, really durable and is gonna stand up. So um, we're gonna cook this in here the rest of tonight. Now, you guys know that the ugly spot is, uh, is basically back here. Um, where we had some some fire stuff and we you know we repaired our firewall let me let me get this out of the way so we repaired our firewall with the just you know adding some more resin and fiberglass and stuff like that this is all just seam sealer and although it is a little bit burnt the surface is bad um, it still is doing its job and rather than grinding it all off and trying to reapply and not knowing if we're gonna have that full adhesion I'd rather just kind of leave it so what we did when we were kind of designing this car so you wouldn't see the burnt part is we built that reservoir to cover this back section and to cover this up into the glass point and then there is a back padding that I actually comes all the way right up to here that we're gonna to install tomorrow. So really all I'm gonna be doing with this then at this stage really is I'm just gonna come in and be hitting a bunch of stuff with some flat black so it all looks nice and uniform and if anybody does for some reason catch a glimpse, it won't stand out kind of as much. it's blacker there's still a little bit of texture there but again that's gonna get covered up by that pad that's good that's a that's a wrap for tonight we're gonna keep this room heated uh, and hopefully get this paint as dried up as as we possibly can before uh, we throw the engine back in tomorrow try not to scrape anything or scratch anything let's head to the other shop I got something to show you so we just got our fenders back from wrap. So these are our first pieces to be wrapped. They look phenomenal. So this is a uh, this is a white, it's a gloss white pearl. Now this is different than what you see in a lot of pearls where it has all the shades of the rainbow. This is just a pearl, like an actual white physical pearl, like a real life pearl. Um, so it kind of shows a little bit of blue here and there, and a little bit of stuff, but not nothing too crazy. Uh, and it shows the edges very, very well. So it's gonna really highlight the lines on the car. So you guys have seen the rendering everything that's meant to be white is going to be white in this type of design I want to give a huge shout out to the guys that are wrapping the car for us Rapco PDX it's actually the same dude that owns the mobile tire service he owns Rapco PDX so it's like a Portland area uh, wrap company and as you would assume they can handle like everything in-house design and printing and installation of vinyl wraps color change wraps corporate signs banners window tinting paint and protective film all that good stuff so there's a link in the description check out their website there's also a link Link to their Instagram in there. Give them a follow if you want to see some cool wraps. And I will continue to show you the rest of the stuff as it comes in. But you remember, lots of body work yesterday. These went off and came back already today. All right, and with all that talk about wrap, that's a wrap on this episode. Just kidding, that was just a test. Today's episode is a double feature, so please enjoy this Verizon ringtone while your party is. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of B is for Build. So you guys know on this build, everything that we can make carbon fiber, we wanna make carbon fiber. So in this episode, we are going to build, we're gonna, we're gonna make a, we're gonna take a door, we're gonna build a mold out of the outside door skin of it, and then we're gonna recreate that door skin out of carbon fiber, then we're gonna cut the skin off of the door, and then put the carbon fiber one on there. So in the end of the episode, we will have two doors, to have carbon fiber outer panels. It's pretty cool, a little bit of weight savings, and in one of the cases, it's actually how we're saving a door. So it's pretty cool, and it's, I guess it's technically a body repair. Carbon fiber stuff coming right up, stay tuned. Today's episode, since we're gonna be dealing all with composites, I would love to give a huge shout out to a, a company that's been sponsoring us with all of the composite work that we've done. Fiberglass, carbon fiber, uh, the carbon fiber, and all the resin for the wide body kit. I mean, we went through a ton of resources on building carbon fiber wide body. Uh, and the company is Fiberglass. These guys have been helping us out in a huge way. They just did a rebranding, so all their logos and stuff are brand new. I think it looks really cool. And Fiberglass is a great company. They have very knowledgeable staff. Their customer service is great. They've been 
uh, able to help us and teach us. Myself and the other YouTubers that I know that build really cool stuff out of carbon fiber or fiberglass or that type of stuff, uh, all use fiberglass. They have the largest and most comprehensive inventory in the composites industry, so like whatever you need, they're gonna have it. And everything that they sell is first quality, meaning that everything that is manufactured and, and packaged and handled at the highest standard. And they've just been a great company uh, for us to work with and in a huge part of our success uh, that you're gonna see in today's video. Spoiler alert. So there's a link in the description, guys. If you need any fiberglass, carbon fiber, you wanna build any of these types of things, you wanna do some of this stuff that we're doing uh, in today's episode, hit that link and that's where you're gonna get good supplies. One more thing I forgot to mention, today is technically six days left until SEMA. It's almost midnight, uh, so basically five. But this episode starts months ago. We built our first door and got our successful door skin a long time ago and then we've been slowly doing stuff, but then we had to source the second door and you know, other things got in the way and stuff like that. So this is actually the longest spanning BS for Build working episode that we've ever done. It crosses many months. You're gonna see our clothes change a lot. Uh, that's that's all. It was summer when we started and it's, it's fall now. So that's it, I just wanted to mention that, enjoy. So we are back working with the mold. That's the cool thing about making molds at least is if you mess up the part that you make in it, you pop it out and you can keep working with your mold. And this mold is still very good to be, continue to be used. But we're gonna change some things from the last time. Uh, we're gonna do this all one quick time lapse until we get the part right, because you guys have seen us do this step by step plenty of times. But here's some of the changes that we're making. One, our vacuum bag is gonna go around the entire mold and the part. So it's not just gonna be using the flange. There's too many points of failure at the flange. So we're gonna vacuum bag the whole thing. Secondly, our vacuum vacuum pump was not up to the task of working on this. That vacuum pump pulled literally one two hundredth of the amount of vacuum that you need. So we have a new vacuum pump courtesy of Fiberglass uh, that pulls 250 times more vacuum to get us to the appropriate amount of vacuum on our piece, which is fantastic. And the other one that we're going to do is we're going to pre-cut everything so it's all ready to go rapid fire. Just you know, lay our resin, lay our, our, our fabric and our different pieces, our peel ply and our uh, breather cloth. All of that stuff will be pre-cut. And uh, lastly, we're gonna change the timing on the PVA a little bit. So, like I said, you guys have seen us go through this, you've seen us do the steps. Let us nail this one, let's get it right. And then I will tell you guys exactly what we did. This is awesome. We definitely did it. We got a good carbon fiber piece out of this. You can see that the edges, the um, the, the resin went all the way to the edges here and was able to make those sharp drops and, and especially over here. Now we got uh, a little bit of fogging in some of the resin. That was my fault because of the, the PVA um, actually mixed a little bit with the resin. But remember, we're covering over this so that little bit of fogginess doesn't matter. That's one of the really nice things about if you're gonna paint carbon fiber or anything like that, if you have a little pinhole or you have a little bit of something here or there, you know, you can repair that and nobody will ever see since these are gonna be white in the end. So that's nice. But overall, we got a really, really good looking carbon fiber panel out of it. And, you know, you see like this is just gonna cut out and be all perfect and I'm really, really excited about it. Our edges still have a little bit of uh, some little bit of crustiness here down here, just a tiny bit, and uh, I wanted to address that. So I think that that is more of an issue with the mold. So you can see we're asking the fiber to make a really, really sharp edge here. 
and then keep going over here. And the reason is because that's kind of how we copied the door, right? But if we would have used a little bit of this clay that uh, fiberglass provided with me, provided me with on the original door mold and made this not have a step, because it's like, why, why is the step there? It doesn't need to be there. It makes it really hard for the fiber to get into there and all that stuff. And it's not there for any reason. What it should do is it should come off straight. The fiber should just keep going off straight. And then you cut that there and that makes the end of your door panel. So um, in retrospect, Part of the really big challenge that we were having with this was the fact that I kind of built the mold um, to be really, really hard to work with rather than building it a little bit more simplistically. Because I'm noticing over here where we use some of the clay for the repairs and stuff, we got really, really good results underneath the clay. We have a really nice transition and everything like that. So um, this is definitely our final, our final skin for that door. Um, but it could have been a lot easier on us. We might have even got the first try if I just didn't include that step that wasn't needed. So this is great. I'm really stoked. It needs to be cleaned up. It's still got that release film all over it. That's why it's not as shiny as it should be. Uh, it will not need any layer of finishing work. This is plenty uh, shiny and glossy and everything like that and smooth to be able to wrap over. So the next step is, is we got to go ahead and trim these edges, clean the edges all up. And then we're going to walk over to our door and look at the mods that we got to make for our door to get the metal version of this off so we can put this on. door panel is trimmed up all along the edges it's looking really really good uh, it's nice and nice and firm so that's good to go now the next thing we need to work on is the actual door let's get that in here so with this door so we can put our carbon fiber skin on it what we need to do is cut this metal outer skin off now the skin kind of wraps around the bottom and we're guessing it's seam sealed uh kind of in this side and maybe a little bit even on the bottom side or it's just the wrap around and the pressure from like the stamping that holds this whole thing on here we're not really sure but either way we're taking it off so kyle's going to go ahead and make a cut all the way around and then we'll work the edge off and what it's going to leave us with is what you see on the bottom side here and that will be the flange that we uh, mount our carbon fiber to the outer door skin off that's what's left of it uh, as they say there is no going back now we cut up an eight thousand dollar lamborghini door and i'm excited about it so the next thing that we got to do is we got to make sure that we have a clean surface this is all the seam sealer that's left behind when they seal that uh seam you know so kyle's gonna come in with a flap disc clean all this up so we got some nice clean aluminum and then uh, i'll come in i'll show you the adhesive that we're going to be using and we're going to prep the door and the panel and then um glue the panel to the door. Got an edge now that is all cleaned up got no more paint on it it's ready to uh, have the adhesive applied to it so we're gonna go ahead and clean this and we're gonna clean the back side of the panel as well where we're gonna lay the adhesive and the adhesive that we're using is some of this stuff and uh, we're using this because this is what I was told you use to bond carbon fiber to metal sounds like the stuff to do so uh, we'll squirt this squirt this out of the gun through the nozzle around here we'll lay our panel on there squish it down Use a couple clamps here and there, and it, it will glue it onto the door. All right, guys, today is October 19th. Uh, there's 13 days left until we have to uh, get this car on a truck for SEMA. Um, we made this door like a month and a half ago or something. This is actually technically now the longest spanning episode that BS for Build has ever done. This bill, this door, other than uh, just finishing up the edges, it, it looks really great. Now, I don't know where I left you guys off because like the last time we filmed anything was so long ago, but the other door, the outside, let me show you. 
The outside skin is messed up. So we're gonna copy the skin off of the green one, build a carbon fiber skin, and then we're gonna bend all this stuff back up to match with the skin, seal it all up, and then we'll have two working doors. So now it's crunch time and the pressure is real because if we mess this up, uh, we probably don't have time to order more supplies. We might, um, but we really don't wanna mess this up and we need our door to be done for SEMA. So here's our outer door skin that we wanna replicate. We pulled it off my green Lamborghini. Uh, you guys saw us take the handle out and all that other stuff. So we're gonna be waxing this couple layers of partle paste wax and then I'm gonna spray a layer of PVA over it All right, so I had to go out of town for a few days uh, with the car over to the body shop while the roof was getting done. And so I let Kyle take over um, and build his first carbon fiber door skin. So he went ahead and did three layers inside of here with the resin, the peel ply, the breather cloth, and then vacuum bagged it up. So we're gonna cut this vacuum bag off very carefully because we wanna reuse it for another part that we have in mind coming up soon. Uh, so we're gonna cut it off, get the part out of here, and try and delaminate or, or detach the carbon fiber door skin from our mold. piece out and pretty cleaned up now our edges are pretty rough just like on the other mold but we got a game plan for that we got a strategy for that after we bonded onto the door we'll use a little bit of body filler that'll be all good so Kyle's gonna come through now with the cutoff wheel and cut this so we just end up with just the skin that we want Kyle gave the skin a nice cut, so that's pretty cut up and, and looking good, uh, ready to be applied to the door, and he went ahead and cut off the outer door skin of this thing, so now he's gonna go ahead and make the uh, kind of really defined cut so he can peel the pinch weld off of this all the way around, and then we'll start to look at what it means to bend all of this stuff back into shape. Okay, Kyle got the rest of the door off of the door. Got the metal off of the pinch weld, so help me uh, throw that back on here. So when we throw this on here, now we can see you know, the actual damage of the door compared to a good door skin. So you can see that this part is down just a little bit. It's got a little bit of a weird little blip in the angle right there. That's about how it's supposed to be, you know? So we gotta bend that back, and then there's, you see this crease right here. It's creased here, and it's creased here. And this whole section is just a little bit low. So what we gotta do is we gotta hammer this up. Kyle's gonna be hammering this up until it moves the body of this thing back. The good part is, is there's really nothing in here. It's just a little bit of a frame thing. Doesn't hold the track in place, doesn't really do much. So it's just this little bit of metal that's bent. So anyways, that's gonna bend up about three quarters of an inch to an inch. And then we'll bend this flange back to meet up with here. And it'll be ready to be bonded on just like the other one. So it's pretty cool. We're taking a 
you know, a busted door that cost us like one quarter, one fifth of the price of a, of a real door and uh, carbon fiber skin replacing it and it's gonna be all fixed up on a budget. B is for building Lamborghini parts. Alrighty, we got the metal underneath bent back so it's gonna meet up nicely. It's not the prettiest thing in the world and to be honest, we won't have really any ability to do much with it before SEMA. We'll probably do a little bit of body filler where we can, smooth it out, give it a fresh coat of paint, but we're not gonna put too much effort into it. One, I don't normally care about, I don't care period about things like that. And two, we're just on the SEMA deadline. Now you guys saw that on the inside here, Kyle um, cut out this piece that went through here. That uh, used to hold the outside door handle, but um, we actually decided that we're gonna shave the door handles on this car and we're gonna do remote poppers on both the doors, which is something that's really, really cool. Um, and I'm super actually excited to do it. So uh, yeah, so that's it. Um, next steps are we're gonna get um, everything. There's a little bit of carbon fiber we gotta cut out to make sure that the mirror hole is gonna be uh, good. And then we're gonna start to get ready to bond this, uh, this panel onto the metal underneath. It took a little bit of time, but we got this thing uh, hooked up. So our servo is right here. This is actually a stock Lamborghini trunk popping mechanism. So that's like a cable driven trunk pop. And then we have our cable that runs to the door mechanism right here. So that servo runs back into these wires that are eventually gonna go through the door um, and then into the body of the car. We're all wired all up um, to hit the buttons. But let's go ahead. I wanna show you guys how this works. So, so Kyle's gonna apply 12 volts and that's uh, kinda like what the, our remote would do and you'll see this thing go. Yep, and then uh, what I'll do is I'll shut this over here. So this right here emulates shutting the door. It's really hard to see, but you can kind of see how that's right there now. And then Kyle hit it. See how that opened back up now. So that's the door opening for us. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It's gonna be a remote popping door. Um, and that was kind of an idea that we came up with because the Lamborghini door locks aren't working. So they will just have no door handles on the car. When it's shut, it's locked, and then we'll hit that thing and it'll open. So now we can go ahead and get our door skin on. We got our adhesive on, we got this thing strapped down just like the last one, so, uh, and just like the other one, only thing that's left to do now after this dries, clean up the edges, shave the door handle, and we got ourselves carbon fiber door skins. This is pretty cool because a new Lamborghini door costs about eight to 9,000, well that's not even new, a used Lamborghini door, eight to 9,000, uh, and we have a lot, lot less invested into this door. I think this was 2,300 for the door as it is, and then some carbon fiber and some window bits and stuff like that. We're a lot closer to like 4,000 on this door, so. Half off, not bad. All right guys, that's a wrap on carbon fiber door skinning. Thanks again to our sponsor, Fiberglass. Hit that link in the description. Um, that's it, I gotta go to bed. I'll see you guys soon.